Um, <clears throat> hello, my name is Stretch Hoff, and uh, I'm an interviewer for the Public Library of Cincinnati in Hamilton County. And uh, I've got a delightful person here, uh, Mary Massey. Uh, this is September 18th, uh, 2007, at the uh, main library. And our camera operator today is Dennis uh, Daly. So, uh, may I call you Mary or should uh, I? Yes, I have a nickname. Okay, what is it? Well, I dropped the Y of Mary and took my maiden name Thomas and put T-O uh, because it rhymes with go. Because uh -huh. I was scolded many times during World War II by my father who would tell me, now you have brothers that are dying, maybe uh, fighting at war, and all you want to do is go, go, go. go. So is it Marto, M-A-R? M-A-R-T-O. But some people prefer to call me Mary, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. <laughs> well, why don't we um, start off uh, at the very beginning and just where were you born and uh, we'll get into your life story here and what your family looked like. And okay, I was the seventh child of a family of eight children. And um, my parents lived in Banner, Virginia. And of course, the first five children were boys. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. every time after the second, my father would go down to the community uh, mm -hmm. grocery store mm -hmm. to pass out cigars. He'd tell everybody it was a girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so when my sister Kate was born in 1926, no one would believe him. They said, well, we're going to come up to your home and, and check, check it. it. <laughs> <laughs> so my sister Kate was born uh, in 26, 1926, and she was a breech birth. And let's see. We were all born at home, and Is that uh, right? um, and I guess my mother said she probably never lived except she was such a small child. And with pulling on her legs while I was born and could walk before she could. Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. hmm. And so I guess I was such a. Um, a persistent little devil <laughs> and I don't know if I had temper tantrums to get my way or not but hey I was persistent mm -hmm. and so um, um, as most of the people think I am older than my sister mm -hmm. Okay. Because I finished high school before she did. In the fourth grade, she failed, and I passed. I cried when she, they started her to school. So back then, why my mother had one of my older brothers to ask the teacher if I could come to school. Mm -hmm. And so they let me go at four. Oh. And mm -hmm. um, You must have been smart, too, huh? Well, not necessarily. <laughs> yeah. I... I I don't know. I could keep up. I Persistence guess. pays off. <laughs> so you went to high school in Banner? No, uh, we had to ride the bus. Now, my one of my older brothers, Charlie, who was in the Army and uh, served for 30 years uh, mm -hmm. uh, through World War mm -hmm. II, Korea, and Vietnam, uh, he came back to the area and he had worked in the coal mines mm -hmm. and he had 30 days to re-enlist and get his same uh, ranking and he said it's better to um, be in the war even uh, than to go back in the coal, coal mines. mines yeah. Yeah, so a lot, he preferred the service to yeah. coal mines. Yeah. 
I'd like to sometime in the interview get, I know you said you had four brothers in the service, I'd like to talk about them, but first let's trace your path through. Right. Uh, so what happened after high school? Well, as I say, this lady, her name was Miss Fry, F-R-Y-E. I, I think it was Dorothy, mm -hmm. I won't swear to it. Uh, they came and gave us this um, um, civil service exam in the typing room at school. And uh, I was trying for clerk typist, and so I passed. Uh, and there were seven of us from Coburn High School. Uh, we caught the train into Washington, D.C. What year was this? 1945. 1945, uh, okay. June, June of 45, because mm -hmm. I think our graduation was June 1st. Okay. And um, uh, this Ms. Fry met us at the station, and of course housing was at a premium then, so she had a room for two that could be shared out near the Naval Observatory. Okay. There mm -hmm. were two women there, but they, you know, wanted to share it with two others. So uh, Eloise and I, who were good friends, and the principal of the high school, since we were in the ninth grade, had always got us to go out and put up the flag every morning and take it down For four every years evening. you did that? Yeah, <laughs> and, and so uh, we said we would go, and there were seven of us who went, but I think two of them, uh, I know one, but I think two of them, Ola Bryant and Evelyn Bryant, um, they didn't like what they see, but had seen, so they turned around and went back <laughs> home. <laughs> now, did you go to Washington with jobs? Yeah, we had okay. these jobs already before we went there. Okay. And then uh, Eloise and I both worked at Treasure Procurement. Okay. She worked as a uh, she had had taken shorthand, and I hadn't, um, uh, and so she was in a higher category than mm -hmm. I was and made a little more money. Mm -hmm. And um, um, so... Um, um, but you were um, working for the Treasury Department, is that yes. what, as we know it today? Uh, uh, yes, okay. and they had this treasure procurement. I guess procurement means getting materials. Yeah, you buy. Yes, you buy and so <clears throat> I worked for a man named Mr. Cooksey, mm -hmm. C-O-O-K-S-E-Y. <laughs> And his secretary, I think her name was Olivia, and of course Olivia usually gave me my assignments to type and mm -hmm. I get them done. And maybe I did them too fast because I went up, I remember once, and she didn't have uh, anything for me to do, so she said, go see <laughs> Mr. Cooksey. Uh -huh. And of course, um, I did, and he said, well, uh, he sent me over to some, uh, to some other department to ask the man for a paper stretcher. You know, they were pulling my leg. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I didn't say anything. I just went over, and I thought, I, I I was just following orders. Right. I didn't give him any back talk, and I went over and asked this, told this man that Mr. Cooksey wanted a paper stretcher. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. guess what his answer was. But. He said, well, you go tell Mr. Cooksey if he'll get me a paycheck stretcher, yeah. I'll get him a, there you go. a paper stretcher. So I went back and told him I didn't smile at all yeah. to either one of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, that must have been a big event for a big move for you because you came from a small town. Oh, yeah. 
And you're on their way to Washington, D.C. Right. Our high school, although we had uh, interscholastic uh, sports and included interscholastic uh, uh, basketball for girls, we did not have art, physical education, music, mm -hmm. uh, or any of those things. Reading, writing, and arithmetic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, how long were you in it, in uh, Washington D.C. at the church? Well, my uh, friend Eloise, uh, we got a um, vacation come August. I guess mm -hmm. we'd worked long enough to get a little vacation. In 1945. And, right, okay. and she wanted to go <laughs> home. She had a boyfriend in the Navy, <clears throat> and uh, we. Eloise and I had um, filled out an application blank to go to Berea College, Berea, yeah. Kentucky. Yeah. Have you ever heard of that? Oh, place? I've been there. Oh, yes, yeah. it's a wonderful school. Yeah. Not, not another one like it in the world, in my mm -hmm. opinion. And um, she wanted to go home, so we went home, and again, she was a homesick, homesick person. Um, my parents had let my sister and I go visit relatives during the summer. When we were growing up, we visited my father's sister and her family that lived in Russell County, Virginia. And on my mother's side of the family, we went to visit her uncle, our great uncle, mm -hmm. down in Winsome-Salem, North Carolina, mm -hmm. um, and also maybe when I was just in about the sixth or seventh grade, my sister and I uh, visited my father's step-grandmother <coughs> uh, down in Mosine, Tennessee, mm -hmm. that's near Greenville, Tennessee. <coughs> So I had been a, away from home enough You're during the homesick, summer yeah. that, but, oh, Eloise, um, we, uh, she was so homesick. So when we went home in August, she wouldn't go back to Washington, D.C. <laughs> yeah. So I went on back, and uh, we had been accepted at Berea to go there in January. And when I was at home, I saw my Girl Scout leader and had got, uh, she said it well, uh, and her husband said I could work in his drugstore till I went to Berea. So I went on back to Washington, D.C. and uh, put in, um, um, signed papers that I okay. wanted to uh, leave my leave. job, resignation, mm -hmm. I guess they call it yeah. res, well, anyway you pronounce it, okay. Um, what can you tell us about, um, <clears throat> I guess break this into two parts, <clears throat> excuse me, what can you tell us about the people and their attitude uh, or their impressions of the war so this, the, you were in high school primarily when the war was on, say it took from 40 to 45. And then what was Washington, D.C. like towards the end of the war there? What was it like to live there? Oh, well, uh, while we were there, um, Eisenhower came home and they had a parade down um, what would be the Central Street there. Mm -hmm. and of course, uh, so that was a big, big parade. We at our work got to uh, leave and go down by the mm -hmm. street and, and everything. It was... Uh, so when the war was over in Europe, you were, still, you were working in Washington? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. That must have been a big celebration. Right. I don't know if they called it... Did they call that VJ Day? No, that was... VE uh, Day. V.E. Day, yeah, okay. Victory in Europe, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now in high school, uh, you, you want to get into the story of your four brothers at this point? Because somewhere along the line, you, you had a very patriotic family there. Oh, yes. And you raised the flag for four years at the school. Right. School. 
So what was it like in a small town like that? When, uh, oh, well, everyone was supported, uh, was very supportive. We had a, a German man who lived there who had never gotten his citizenship. Hmm. Um, and um, all, uh, I think they came and maybe took him away. <laughs> uh, 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 I know my older sister, Kate, she passed away uh, in March of um, 05. Um, uh, she was 78 years of age. Of, of my eight children, of my eight of my parents' eight children, I'm the only one left. Right? And uh, <clears throat> my father lived to be 85, and my mother lived to be 90. And mm -hmm. my father was buried on Jimmy Carter's um, uh, inauguration, and uh -huh. he had a grandson f who was going to, uh, VMI mm -hmm. to be in the honor guard. Okay. Uh, my parents uh, grew up, uh, I knew them as Democrats. Mm -hmm. But as I grew older and they saw a lot of uh, what they considered unethical things going on, they voted for the person. Okay. Okay. Um, they would have fun today, I think. <laughs> right. Well, now you want me to tell you about my brothers. Well, my yeah. uh, brother Roy, the oldest, did not go into service. He was married and had two children. My brother Charlie was single, and he volunteered and went. And they wanted him to be in Officers Canada School. Okay. but. Uh, I won't say what he said, but he didn't think he'd like it, so uh -huh. uh, he chose to stay in the... Um, um, Was he enlisted? Yeah, uh, enlisted. And, um, and I've already told you, he said he preferred to uh, make a career of the military than to go back down in the mines. So is this the one then where he, he was, had a 30-year military career you were talking right. about? Right. Okay. And, All um, in the Army, is it? Yeah. From the U.S. Okay. Army, okay. and he retired <clears throat> and uh, lived, uh, his widow now lives in Virginia Beach, and he uh, did a work at the Oceanic um, Airport, Mm -hmm. and maintenance because he was in the engineer's battalion. Oh, okay. And, uh, now, where, did he, where was he in the, in the, in the service? What, where did well, he serve? Well, uh, he was in anti-aircraft during the war, and it was in the Pacific. Okay. And, um, and then later he was in Germany and uh, he went to, um, I guess the government sent him to school at Heidelberg University, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, I guess he made the dean's list. He had very good grades. Great. So he was an engineer, was he? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, he wrote me a letter once when he was in Vietnam. Uh, I usually kept most of the letters telling me why he thought the U.S. Uh, Army should be in Vietnam, mm -hmm. uh, you know, why, and why, you know, he was against communism, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and then my brother Ray, he was in service before the war started, mm -hmm. and he uh, was, um, a broiler's made. He had something to do with the steam of, that made the ship go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, I think. Uh, and. Um, um, so he was was he in the navy then? Yes. Okay. And then he came out of service. Um, um, 
I guess in about 47, uh, I guess uh, back in the backwoods, they are very much against uh, uh, homosexuality. Mm -hmm. And um, supposedly, you know, girls wore dresses and the boys wore uh, the pants. And this was in elementary school. The boys played on one side of the playground and the <laughs> girls on the other. And even when you lined up to come into the classes, the boys had their line and the girls yeah. had their line. But in high school, it was different because uh, you just went to your room. You mm -hmm. didn't have when the bell rang or yeah. the, you know, the intercom. And uh, so evidently he, uh, my brother Ray in his area, he was a chief petty officer. Uh, I guess he didn't like what two uh, uh, Navy men were doing there and he, I think, beat them up. Wow, that's one way to take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, yeah. uh, this is the gist or the gossip, so it doesn't need to be. Uh, but he served uh, about six months in um, one of the prisons, and um, mm -hmm. my father refused to hire a lawyer. He couldn't afford it. Oh my gosh. Now, how many years was he in the service? Uh, from about 10 or 12 years. 10 or 12 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one brother <clears throat> was 30 years, one was 12 years. Right, and then my brother Howard, who was also in the Navy, um, I'll blow my nose. Sure, just go <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Have a drink of water. Uh, um, as a senior in high school, he um, would turn 18 in May and or something and would be drafted and so he talked my mother into signing the papers so he could choose his service mm -hmm. and uh, he was um, um, so he went into service before getting his high school diploma and he was at Bainbridge, Maryland and, mm -hmm. uh, in training when Eloise and I were in Washington, D.C., and he came down and oh, visited us. Mm -hmm. And I have a picture of us walking the streets in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. Oh, that's great. And, um, and I sort of oppose all of these statues and everything that they put up in Washington, D.C., because I feel like all the land and space is going to be gone, even though I don't mm -hmm. go there to visit it. I, I thought they should have put it in Bob Dole's uh, home uh, state of Kansas. Mm -hmm. And that way, people from the West could come halfway. Or a century located. <laughs> You're talking about the World War II Memorial? Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, it took them long enough to get that organized and built. That's right. right. So if we keep on having wars, Washington, wow. D.C. can't hold on, <laughs> you know, if we want to put something yeah. up for Iraq, uh, maybe they'll put it up in Texas. Yeah. Uh, Does, uh, have you ever seen the War Memorial? World uh, War II? Well, um, not the World War II, because yeah. I understand it's chairs. Uh, uh, it's, did I understand it's, it's a chair for each state or no, something? No, it's, it's got a... Um, uh, concrete pillar, they're pillars. Oh, okay. And they have one for the Pacific Theater, one for the European Theater. It's very impressive. It's right mm -hmm. between the Washington and Lincoln Memorial, so it's very impressive. Mm -hmm. So now how long was this third brother in the service? Uh, well, there place? was Charlie, <laughs> uh, Ray, and then um, I skipped over my brother John. Uh, he went to the Marines, but my brother Howard went to the Navy, wow. and uh, he um, was on the USS Franklin. 
-hmm. Have you heard of the USS yep. Franklin? Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a fire controlman. Okay. Do you know what a fire controlman is? Uh, I don't think I know that. Well, <laughs> they set the guns, aimed the guns okay. over where they're going to fire. Okay. That's my now, was that in the Pacific? Yes. Yeah, okay. And of course, a lone Japanese bomber, the planes were out on the deck. Uh, the Franklin was an air car air aircraft carrier. Mm -hmm. We're out on the deck, ready to take off, and the pilots maybe were taking their last sip of coffee, getting ready or something, getting ready to board, mm -hmm. and a Japanese plane came through and dropped a bomb on the hangar deck, and they almost sunk, but 509, I believe, brought the ship back to San Diego. Were they able to repair that and go back into service then, or was it? Oh, well, I really <clears throat> don't remember, but mm -hmm. I do know they have an organization called that, uh, name of that club, of, of the number that did get off. And um, uh, some of the officers who came on to survey the damage, well, they got off somewhere over there in the Pacific. And my brother said uh, they wouldn't let them be a member of the club because they didn't bring the ship back to California and it was only those who got to be, who brought it back to California mm -hmm. uh, were allowed to be, be in, in the, the club. club. Mm -hmm. I just wonder how many of those are still living. I know my brother Howard had gotten an update of uh, some of that material. Yeah. He passed away in two in two thousand. Uh huh. Well, there might be some still alive. Right. Yeah. So is that five brothers now? If I'm counting right. Uh. Well, that went, that, that that's went three. I've told you now. My brother John, Charlie Ray, and then John. That's the way they are in ages. Well, my brother John, he was married and had one child, and he said, now my brother Ray is gonna come back and tell what all the Navy has done. Mm -hmm. My brother Charlie will come back and tell what all the Army has done, and uh, so I'm gonna join the Marines. <laughs> okay. So he took his training at Quantico and maybe Paris Island, and um, he was uh, in the Pacific, and on, I don't know what ship they were on. I usually didn't mm -hmm. get to listen to all the war stories because the men at our reunions would get together and talk, and we mm -hmm. women took care of the food. Yeah, and. Um, but they went on this island, Peleliu, just for practice, mm -hmm. not knowing that it was heavily fortified. And uh, he lost his leg in, I guess, hand-to-hand -hand combat from a hand, hand grenade. And I guess he knew how to put a tourniquet on. And uh, Did that I, himself, did he, with a tourniquet? I, mm -hmm, yeah. I guess so. And uh, so he was, uh, brought back, you know, yeah. home sooner, and uh, and uh, so. Um, well, just to put this in perspective with your life, you you were the you were older than these you were younger than these brothers. Right. So, they went into the service when you were in junior high school and high school. That that's when they got into service. And right. That's okay. That's amazing. Right, and. Um, How'd your parents feel about having all your brothers like that go in the service? Well, uh, my father, um, he thought we here <laughs> had shipped all of our tin cans over to Japan and they had taken <laughs> it and made metal to yeah. come back and shoot us. Yeah. So he was uh, 
Uh, I guess sometimes I take a little bit after him. You know, I don't know all the facts, but sometimes I'll spout off my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Did he work in the coal mine, your father? Uh, yeah, my father okay. was uh, superintendent of the Robert Fleming Coal Company there in Banner, Virginia for a good number of years um, during the Depression and later. But um, the of the Robert Fleming and their family sold out uh, the mines and so he took a, a job and of course they had their own man that they wanted to be superintendent mm -hmm. and so he uh, <clears throat> took a job in Buchanan County uh, repairing track mm -hmm. because his first job as a 16 year old was uh, working on the railroad, mm -hmm. you know, as a section hand um, yeah. on one of those little cars. That, Hard work. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But um, my father, I guess he went through the eighth reader, they called it, and my mother went through the fourth reader. Mm -hmm. But they, um, uh, they were smart people mm -hmm. and uh, I know my mother, even when I was at Berea, would hoe corn for my father for a dollar and then she'd send it to me. Oh my gosh, that's so. great support. <laughs> well, you had a uh, uh, very patriotic family, that's fantastic. Oh, and, and of course, uh, up, you know, they had that uh, rule, you had to, in Virginia, you had to pass uh, go down and show you that you knew uh, something about the Constitution before you could vote. Oh, uh, uh, really? <laughs> uh, and uh, mm -hmm. I guess it was not up until the 50s that they did away with that law. Mm -hmm. And of course, that may have been to keep um, the blacks from voting, but mm -hmm. my parents, uh, did not uh, believe uh, in discrimination. Yeah, they believed yeah. the black man was just as good as they were. Yeah. And in fact, my father traded a, a pistol uh, for a clock to a black man. A pistol for a clock. Huh? Yeah, his, yeah, his name was, my father's name was Arnold B. Thomas. He thought the the B was for boy guard, a Civil War person, uh -huh. and uh, then he didn't think he had a birth certificate, but his father had yeah. uh, recorded his birth, and they didn't know how to spell boy guard, so they only put B. B. <laughs> <laughs> so he said he wished he had known that. Yeah. No one would have ever known. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, to jump back uh, in your story, what was it like to see General Eisenhower after the war? The, the, were you at the parade? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, he was, I think, in a Jeep. They had Jeeps going down, and like, and he was standing up in, it could have been in a convertible. Well, I was uh, 17, an excited young yeah. girl. Oh, and, that was the most people I had ever seen yeah. in my life. <laughs> All of yeah. At that parade, so, uh, and and then there were young men. Um, they had a rope, and you weren't supposed to, you know, go under the rope. You know, uh, I guess nobody ever thought of anybody would shoot somebody. You know, not them, yeah, no. right? So, no. but they still. <clears throat> you know, had the um, service men mm -hmm. um, um, at the road in. Uh, that was so I guess it, it was one of the first parades I had ever seen. It had to be a big event in your right. life. Yeah. Right. Now were there a lot of soldiers marching behind? Uh, oh Eisenhower? yeah, they were, was, was yeah. I, I remember the film of that, yeah. Right. So, um, uh, 
I, what impressed me most were the, were the jeeps. Mm -hmm. I didn't, they were massive because I was about five feet eight and nine inches tall, mm -hmm. taller than my mother and sister both. My mother always said I grew tall because I stretched to shoot basketball because yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. I liked to play. Yeah. I, uh, and I majored in physical education because I told people I didn't want to think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just wanted to do. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, but there was a lot of thinking even in physical education. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, during the war, did you receive a lot of uh, letters from your brothers? Was uh, there good communications there? Or well, uh, um, my brother Howard, the one closest to me, wrote to me more than any of them. And while he was in uh, uh, training, was one of his friends wrote to me. Mm -hmm. But then after, I think his friend must have been killed on the ship. Mm -hmm. But I do know when my brother Howard came home, uh, he had a lot of nightmares. He'd wake you up at night yeah. screaming. Well, you must have had a window full of flags because I remember uh, my father and my uncle were in the Second World War, and they had the, the like a banner you'd put in your window if you had a, a somebody in service. Right. Did it have a star on it? I can't quite remember what um, that was. Well, I imagine they might have been. Uh, yes, they were. Well, um, yes, they were. There were certain things with mm -hmm. stars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a show that you had. Somebody in the service. Right. Oh, okay. Um. <clears throat> uh, I think uh, my family was <clears throat> fortunate that all my brothers came home. Yes. Very uh, and I, I, um, I credit that to the fact that they grew up knowing how to shoot a gun. Mm -hmm. Because my father taught my sister Kate and I to shoot a twenty-two rifle. Did you do a lot of hunting, your brothers? Oh, yeah, my the... brothers did. They, <clears> you <throat> know, they uh, hunted rabbit and squirrel, and mm -hmm. there, of course, there were other things. And there was a wholesale dealer in our home, a town of Coburn, like Banner, and three miles away is Coburn. Okay, and. Uh, they would uh, skin these animals and have it on a pole inside out to dry. Mm -hmm. And see, they take these pelts yep. uh, down to Lacey Fuller, who ran the wholesale, Coburn Wholesale Company. And no doubt those ended up in New York to make the furs that mm. a lot of people used. And, and I don't know what all kinds of yeah. uh, other animals they mm -hmm. You know, they'd send. Yes. Um, okay, so let's. That happened as a little girl in yeah. my elementary <clears throat> years because I was born in 28. So 28 to 40, uh, 38, 10 years, mm -hmm. you know. And then it was like a different era after the 40s. Yeah. Now when they came home, was there a big celebration or when all the brothers came back? Um, you remember that? Um, well, um, um, uh, or they might well, have come home at different uh, points in time too. Uh, yeah. Well, they didn't all come back right at once. My brother John was married and his wife had another child while he was in, uh, in service. Mm -hmm. Evidently, she was pregnant when he took off because mm -hmm. they sometimes had their ups and downs, you know, uh, young people getting married because um, once they had a little spat, they first lived with my parents when they got mm -hmm. married. 
and so John told her he was going to the CCC. Do you know what the CCC? No, that was some kind of conservation corps okay. uh, that was for young uh, boys. For example, where I live in Virginia is near High Knob, and mm. uh, the CCC group brought sand in there from Florida <clears throat> and made a lake, and we have a sandy beach even though the water is like swimming in ice water. Uh, oh. When I was uh, <laughs> back in the fort, uh -huh. really, it was so chilly, just uh. as chilly as uh, Lake Michigan. Oh yes, uh, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh. um, so John told her, see the railroad train, uh, Norfolk and Western, came by our home around 12 noon going west mm -hmm. and then around 4 p.m. it went back east. And um, so sure enough, we were all out on the front porch watching to see if he would be on the train and he was there waving. <laughs> and so she's, Macy started crying and asked her, asked my father to take her back home and uh -huh. she lived on Sandy Ridge. Uh, she was the daughter of uh, Bulger and Caroline Mead. Uh -huh. So she went back home. And, uh, but they got over these yeah. things. I, yeah. they, that was a tough time for everybody. <laughs> I mean, just, I mean, because a lot of People got married and the husband was gone to war for a couple of years, and right. so that was a tough time. Right. Well, um, after Washington, uh, would you pick up your life story then? You came home and went to Berea, and what happened? Uh, well, I went to Berea for one semester, mm -hmm. and then I got a job at the Battle Creek Sanitarium in um, Battle Creek, Michigan for the summer, but I wanted to come home for my sister Kate's high school graduation. Mm -hmm. So then when I got on to Battle Creek, well, I didn't get one of the waitresses' jobs that would get uh, good tips. Mm -hmm. So I worked in the kitchen and I didn't feel like I uh, had enough money um, and they said, I. By then, by September, though, I, um, the college girls leaving, I stayed on and worked as a waitress mm -hmm. and went to Augur Bright's business school. And my mm -hmm. brother, Charlie, uh, gave me the money for my tuition. Oh, wow. And now, where's that school located? Uh, in Battle Creek, In Michigan. Battle Creek, okay. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, was there till February and I took a cold and I was sort of lonesome for my, uh, so I went back home and then went on back to Berea. Okay. I contacted them and then I went back to Berea uh, in January 49 and graduated in 52. Mm -hmm. But you know now when I look over that, uh, see when I was there in, um, January 46, they did not have a physical education program. Oh, okay. But when I went back in 49. Good timing. <laughs> <laughs> they, so I'm one of the first graduates that uh, entered their program. Okay, congratulations. And we had a wonderful um, a head of the department, Miss McCauley. And so she gave me a scholarship to uh, Camp Minnewonka between mm -hmm. my junior and senior year. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of Camp yeah, Minnewonka? I really have, yeah. You have? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Well, that's. Or maybe that's one of those names you think you've heard of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a. Tell uh, us about it, yeah. Well, that's a camp uh, that uh, William Danforth. Uh, and his uh, Sunday school, they were 
ahead of Sunday school groups or something mm -hmm. uh, started this camp in Michigan and they have one in New Hampshire also. Mm -hmm. And it's to give uh, college students uh, a two weeks experience in leadership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It still uh, is in existence today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just, I went to um, uh, there for a reunion just a few years ago. Now, I think earlier you told me, this, so did you teach school then after graduating and but, took, uh, yes. taught physical education? Yes, mm -hmm. I. Where was that? Uh, that was in Fielddale, Virginia. Mm -hmm. The, um, um, uh, that's in Henry County and uh, this man in Henry County, Reeves, I think was his name, came to Berea uh, recruiting, and this wasn't too far from my home, mm -hmm. and so I went there mm -hmm. to teach. And uh, in the meantime, a friend that I had known at Berea had gone into the Korean conflict and we were corresponding mm -hmm. and um, uh, he came to visit me one Christmas and so asked me to wait for him and so we got married in um, uh, June of 53. Mm -hmm. so, good. Uh, good for you for waiting. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm kind of backtracking a little bit, but um, I oh, go ahead. I had one brother, Harmon, my younger brother, who served during the Korean conflict. My God! And he uh, served in Goose Bay, Alaska. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's Goose Bay, Labrador, or someplace. Mm -hmm. Goose Bay, anyway. Yeah. And he wrote to me. Okay. Good. He'd tell me about training a flea. Uh, training a flea. <laughs> Had good duty up there. Huh? <laughs> well, where were, so when Pearl Harbor happened. Oh, that was a sad time. Where, where were you then? In I junior? was in the living room of our home listening to the radio with my mother and my older sister and my younger brother. And were you, where were you in? In uh, junior high school or high school? Uh, I was, well, we didn't have junior high yeah. school. We just called it all high school, eighth grade through 12th. Okay. So I was in about the eighth, eighth or ninth. And were your brothers already in the service or uh, already before uh, that happened? Um, I know you no, said no. One no, was. You said yeah, one uh, had enlisted. Yeah, right. one, just the one. Uh, uh, my oldest brother was married. But I was in the living room, and uh, and that happened. Yes, mm -hmm. we we got it on the news. My father always listened to Loyal Thomas and mm -hmm. different things like that. Mm -hmm. And so then you had the the, the remainder of your brothers uh, that were in the service. They enlisted after right. this happened. Right. Um, what was your thinking of going to Washington D.C.? Well, uh, I thought it was an adventure, right. and of course, uh, you know, uh, we were just in the coaches with our uh, suitcases up on a rack, and and you talk, you know, to people and everything. But I know some uh, young boy offered to carry my suitcase, and I I said, no, I can carry it myself. <laughs> But was it kind of a patriotic thing you, I mean, going to Washington, was that your uh, contribution? Uh, Did you feel that well, way? Or? Well, I, I was just thinking, hey, um, I'm off on my own and I'm going to earn a little money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, guess, I guess I just had a feeling of being independent. Uh -huh. And, um, but you know, I, but I was so glad I had a friend with me. I yeah, wasn't oh, like yeah. going alone. Yeah. Uh, I think I've been scared stiff, but yeah. there were seven of us and 
and you know started out yeah. and, uh, and our three other friends Betty Counts and Madeline Hutchins and Dolores Peters we had and Eloise and I we had all played on the basketball team mm -hmm. so we we were really good friends yeah. and knew each other but these three were sent over to Alexandra, Virginia to mm -hmm. uh, in like a dormitory type housing over there. Mm -hmm. And so Now did your uh, was was your town by any chance near any uh, factories that produced anything for the war effort and uh, well, did you know people that worked there? Um, Bristol, Virginia, Tennessee was the closest place and they later had um, Raytheon, but mm -hmm. now whether that was there during World War II, I don't know. Okay. I think they had an adding machine company over there, and they may have been others, but um, uh, teenagers uh, aren't that interested. A lot of people from our hometown left and went to Detroit, Michigan to work. Oh yeah, and, uh, yeah convert a lot of automotive right. facilities there. Mm -hmm. right. What what's, uh, <clears throat> what what are is the biggest event you remember about the war? Was it the Pearl Harbor announcement, or did anything happen in Washington when you were there that uh, is memorable that well, my um, friend and I, we went uh, sightseeing every Sunday, and we went to uh, down in the catacombs. We walked, we got to walk up to, uh, is it the Washington Monument mm -hmm. that you could climb yeah. all the way up? We could climb all the way up it back in yeah. my day, and that was really, uh, uh, an adventure yeah. I really enjoyed. Uh, now, what were the, the catacombs? The catacombs, yeah. that was in the uh, national, uh, maybe uh, something, the Catholics. They had down underground things just like the catacombs were back in the Jewish Holy mm. Land oh, okay. and things. Uh, mm. um, and then we went to the Nash, uh, the Smithsonian, and yeah. got to see a lot of things there. And uh, and we went to the Shakespeare and Folger Library, and um, just mm -hmm. uh, every Sunday. And then we quite an education. Just uh, yeah. then we visited. Uh, our friends over in Alexandria, Virginia, and we went up to the Capitol building and. Um, I've mm -hmm. got five minutes. Well, you st you talk something. You tell me something about yourself. Well, you're the you're the focus here. Not, <laughs> not me. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, the um, I just wonder. Uh, I know in Wise County, Virginia, there was a man down there. Uh, at the uh, University of Virginia at Wise, seemed like his name was Hudson, that was trying to do an article on uh, civil service employees mm -hmm. that, from mm -hmm. that part of the country. Yeah. And I just uh, wonder, um, I think um, what impressed me more was this one well, I know this one family there in Banner, Garnet Porter, he lost his life on one of the Navy ships. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, you know, uh, growing up as a small child uh, with some people, some of your neighbor's children dying of meningitis, and you were always had been quarantined. Oh yeah. I think that has made me very, very weird mm -hmm. because I'm a chicken. 
you're a cheap <laughs> I, I think, listen, anybody can leave a small town like you did and go to Washington, D.C. There's a lot of uh, go, get up and go. Uh, well, you know? um, because uh, I hate to think of death and dying. Yeah, yeah. And therefore, I, uh, I'd rather laugh than cry. Yep, I would, everybody would, I'm sure. Well, uh, it's been a delight meeting you. Thank you. And uh, your family has certainly given a lot to this country. We thank you for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm.